I want to thank Chairwoman Maxine Waters for the opportunity to testify. And I would like to thank Ranking Member Patrick McHenry for taking the time to Google who I am. Cute. Very My cute. name is Hassan Minhaj. I'm a Muslim, and I condemn radical Islamic terrorism. That has nothing to do with anything. I just want that on the record. It's good to get ahead of these things. Now, Chairwoman Waters invited me here today because I host a political comedy show on Netflix called Patriot Act, which means I may owe some of you guys royalties. Just DM, we can talk later. Now, we recently did an episode on the student loan crisis, and it really hit home with our audience because 44 million Americans owe more than $1.6 trillion of student loan debt. In fact, the day we shot our episode, we polled our studio audience, it was only about 200 people, in that room alone had over $6 million of student loan debt. Now granted, our audience is mainly unemployed poli-sci majors, but that's still a lot of money. <laughs> now this issue is sidelining millions of Americans. People are putting off marriage, kids, homeownership, and retirement, especially my generation. So I'm 33, and growing up, it was drilled into our heads. You gotta go to college if you want a middle-class job. And we even tell kids today, look, if you don't go to college, you might as well get a face tattoo. And then they point to Post Malone, and we're like, okay, that's one guy. He's a very popular musician. <laughs> but it's true, two-thirds of all jobs in America require at least some college. This is the standard now. And that wasn't the case when most members of this committee were in school. And you paid far less for your degrees. That's not speculation. We looked up where the 60 members of this committee went to college and what your school's tuition was at that time. Even adjusting for inflation, college cost way less across the board. So Chairwoman Maxine Waters, your tuition at Cal State LA in 1971 was the equivalent of about $1,000 a year. Today, Cal State costs well over six grand. That's more than a 500% jump. Congressman King, right? In 1965, Congressman King paid the equivalent of almost 10 grand a year at St. Francis College. Today, St. Francis costs over 25 grand. On average, this entire committee graduated from college 33 years ago and paid an inflation-adjusted tuition of $11,690 a year. Today, the average tuition at all of your same schools is almost $25,000. That's a 110% increase over a period of time when wages have gone up only 16%. So people aren't making more money, and college is objectively way more expensive. You see what's happened? We've put up a paywall to the middle class. And if there's one thing Americans don't deserve more of, it's paywalls. That's why we put up our entire show for free on YouTube. It's also because you can't really find anything on Netflix. <laughs> it's like the lost and found bin of entertainment. You're like, great, another show about people who love cake. <laughs> now, despite these, number, you, these numbers, you often hear the idea, these kids wouldn't be in trouble if they just took some responsibility. But they're trying to be responsible. They're investing in education, and they are trying to pay their loans back. And yet many borrowers are still treated like deadbeats because the government has put their financial futures in the hands of predatory, for-profit loan servicing companies. Companies like Navient and other companies you will hear from today have a history of misleading borrowers and pushing them into repayment plans that in some cases have cost individual borrowers tens of thousands of dollars in unnecessary interest. And the worst part is, borrowers don't even get to choose their loan servicer. The Department of Education chooses for you. So there's no competition that makes these companies provide better service. Now look, we know the deck is stacked against student borrowers in ways that it wasn't 10 or even 15 years ago. And they deserve some basic protections. Americans should not have to go bankrupt pursuing higher education and they should never be preyed upon by underregulated loan servicing companies. So members of this committee, we know the government is capable of stepping in during a financial crisis. So really all I'm asking today is, why can't we treat our student borrowers 
the way we treat our banks. Because 44 million Americans, that is too big to fail. Thank you so much for your time, and I will now go back to where I came from. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Minaj.